glasses. It's like I didn't care anymore. I didn't care what I drove uh, because my future, my family's future is way more important than what I drive and what type of clothes I wear, uh, what I could spend my money on or our money on. Uh, that, that took a, a, a mental shift. Uh, we started a minimalism journey. So we got rid of a lot of things that was weighing us down. Um, stopped buying stuff that didn't add value to our lives anymore. And we started really holding on to uh, uh, appreciating experiences more than things. And so that was a shift that helped us out a ton. Uh, just really thinking about, okay, what does the word say about stuff? It's not saying that you can't have things, but to the detriment of things having you, that's where that's where things can spiral because you feel like you need to have the latest and greatest of everything. And when reality, that's just it just clutters up your life. So that helped us out a lot. Uh, just really embarking on a minimalism journey uh, while we were getting out of debt, and now we're at a point where it's just okay. Do we really want that thing that we said we wanted to get now? I'm not really, not at the detriment of, of building wealth. Doesn't matter anymore. So. Oh. And what scripture would you say, you know, help you guys through the process or Bible passes, you know, that help you guys through the passes? <laughs> yeah. So for 2019, excuse me, for 2020, mm -hmm. we had a theme. Uh, we try to do a theme word or a scripture for each year. Uh, for 2020, the theme was order, transition, and trust. Those were the three words that we leaned on, right? Because our life is so different because I'm military. I travel. Brittany is a celebrity makeup artist. She traveled. And so we understand that, hey, we need to be in order and alignment with God. And he transitions us quite often with moving and things like that. And we knew we had a big transition coming up. And so a lot of that, we had to trust on the Lord. And uh, the scripture that came up was Proverbs 3, verse five through six, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. And that scripture carried us through 2020 because it was like, okay, anytime we had any turbulence that came up, any challenges or trials, we leaned on that scripture. We said, okay. Let's remove ourselves out of this, trust in God more, lean on God, not our own understanding. And that carried us a lot. It's still yeah. carrying us. Right. You know, it's still carrying us. And uh, that was, that was key. Yeah. That was key. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, definitely one thing I want to talk about, you know, I can see it here. You guys have very great communication skills. And, you know, I can imagine, you know, through this process, you know, as complicated as being different issues, it was important to be on the same page. Um, so how important is it for people, you know, whether single or married, you know, when they're trying to go through this process, um, specifically if they marry, um, to be on the same page? Um, it's really important for, you know, the married couple to be on the same page because I've talked to Tony about this it just hit me one day. I said, you know, I can't imagine me wanting to spend money and you wanting to become debt free and build wealth. But yet I want to spend money on clothes and bags and shoes. And then I'm pouting because I can't have the money. Just thinking about the stress and the turmoil that it will put on our marriage, I became very grateful that we were on the same page because I was able to just really look at if you were a spender mm -hmm. and you were not on the same page with me, how would that make me feel? You know, if you wanted to spend money on shoes and, you know, this these things, but yet I was ready to be on a debt-free journey. You know, I just thought to myself like, wow, like that would really, that would really suck. So I became overwhelmingly grateful that we are on the same page. And, you know, it's important because you can't have one spouse going in one direction and the other spouse going in another. It, some, some people do it, but it's a lot tougher when you do it that way. Um, it may take a lot longer when you do it that way um, and you work 
quicker, faster, better together. You know, as a team, um, you're going to get to your goal a lot faster, a lot smoother. And I would just advise any couple who is not on the same board when it comes to their finances to try to get a mediator. You know, go talk to a counselor, um, go talk to your uh, your pastor or some your first lady or someone that you trust um, with your marriage, because nine times out of 10, it's probably bigger than the finances. And if you can get on the same page um, and possibly remove whatever resentment you may have or attachment that you have with money and get to the root of why you can't get on the same page with your spouse, then I think you will be able to move forward because, you know, nine times out of 10, it's bigger than just the money, in my opinion, I think so. So I think um, it's just super important. Yeah, very. So key. Uh, I'll just add this uh, for single, getting an accountability partner yes. is very important. We still had accountability, even though we're married, we're accountable for one another. And, uh, you know, we have our circle of people that that poured into us as well. So uh, for somebody that's single, definitely having that accountability buddy that can help talk some sense into you when you're not thinking clearly. Uh, somebody that can help motivate you as well, because going through any type of journey, you get tired. Yeah. You know, you lose steam. Uh, your, your judgment can become cloudy. And it's like, why am I doing this? You need those reminders like, Here's why you're doing this. So uh, yes, having that self-drive, but it's always good to have a team with you. Somebody can lean on, like, hey man, I'm tripping. I need help today. What would you do in this situation? Having those real talk conversations with yourself. And uh, yeah, having that team, that teamwork atmosphere is, is one of the major keys to success when it comes to debt-free journey, any type of journey that you're going on. And if you don't have anyone around you that is on that journey, go and find somebody that's on that journey. Social media is crazy huge right now in terms of like being able to find a community Mm -hmm. of people. Um, You don't necessarily have to, you know, live in the same city with these people, but you can find a community Mm -hmm. that is interested in the same thing that you're interested in. And it'll give you motivation to keep going. You you kind of definitely right on that. Definitely right on that. I have a couple more questions. I do want to talk about, you know, those, I can't even phrase it this way. What would you say are questions people should ask, you know, when they're in a dating period um, in terms of finance? Um, Because, you know, finance, you know, is one of the reasons most people get divorced. Um, So what are some questions you would tell people to ask to make sure they are on the same page even before they even get to marriage and they may have conflicts? Yeah, that's a good question, man. That's like, we... We grew up in a society, or like, let me just rewind. We were younger, man. Talking about money was like forbidden. You know, you didn't talk about money at all. So growing up, that was the mentality. But as we got older, it's like, why not talk about money? If money is one of the leading causes of divorces, why are we not talking about it? Why are we not educating ourselves, educating our children so when they grow up to be young adults and they're in the dating phase, you can weed out a lot of foolishness. You really can. You can avoid a lot of financial infidelity as well. Yeah. People going back and you know swiping their card or using using something when you're not communicating with your better half. But I think when you're dating, uh, having those boundaries, having a budget, talking about those things. I mean, you might not talk about that on your first date. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, you you want to establish some ground rules and say, hey, this is important to me. My financial, uh, my financial health is important to me. And I, I you know, I want to know your take on it. What, you know, how are you approaching your finances? Do you what's your what's your five year plan, 10 year plan? Uh, what do you know about uh, investing and, and saving money and Things like that. Not saying that you're you're grilling somebody, but just having that conversation, having a healthy conversation. But you know about credit. You know, let's talk about these things because you can get into a situation with somebody and and if you're not talking about money while you're dating, 
and you and you get with somebody that's got hundreds of hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of student loans because you didn't ask the right questions. Now guess what? Now that's our student loans. You have to be upfront and transparent and say, okay, hey, this is my situation. Are you okay with this? I want to get better with money. If you're not good with money, let's go through a process. And before you get married, maybe you can do some counseling on that. You know, you can go through some uh, some finance classes and learn how to deal with money. But I think that's very key. We can talk about sex and stuff during during the dating phase, but we can't talk about money. That's backwards to me. I think you should be able to talk about that. So that's my two cents. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's 